Last week when I talked about why 1987 didn't matter or doesn't matter anymore, um, I wanted to make something really clear. And I don't know if I made it clear enough, so I wanna quickly make this clear before we jump into what's on my mind this week. The reason why 1987 does not matter is because the world had already voted between the major asset classes, right? Between stocks and bonds and cash and commodities and real estate. And the world had already said, stocks are the place to be. Stocks are the place to be. And the world said this in 1982 and 1983 and 1984 and 1985 and 86 and 87 and 88 and 89 and 90 and all the way up to the year 2000. It kept saying over and over the place where there's the most stability, the place where there's gonna be the most growth is the stock market. So when there's a correction within the leading asset, okay, and the correction is only a price correction, it's not a behavioral correction, meaning money didn't go gushing out into um, bonds or cash or commodities or real estate, which it didn't in 1987. Money stayed put, right? So the money that was in the stock market stayed in the stock market, took a big hit, and then came back. It came right back. So knowing those nuanced differences between those assets, it's one of the keys to the kingdom. And it's about, it's really the key to, one of the keys to keeping things powerfully simple, right? Because you're only looking at, whether you call it five assets, right? Stocks, bonds, cash, commodities, or real estate. Or if you say, look, it's stocks, fixed income, fixed income is bonds, and cash, and commodities. The point is you keep it powerfully simple and it keeps you on the right side. And that's why 1987 didn't really matter because the preceding 30 months, the stock market was crushing it up 127%. Yes, it fell 33%, but then it got right back up on its feet and took off for the next 13 years. So knowing those nuanced differences in those relationships between, between those asset classes is so key. Hey everybody, this is RC Peck, and this is my weekly at a glance video. And the thing I want to talk about quickly, because I want to only take a couple minutes of your time and then I'll dig into it this weekend, is whatever strategy you have, okay, and I'm going to look at the big box strategy in a second. There's only two big box strategies. Whatever strategy you follow, I want you to look at its worst case scenario. I w and what I mean by that is I want you to look at it when it wasn't working or when it looked like it was failing. Right, so if you have a big box advisor, you go the big box approach, there's basically only two things they're gonna do for you. They're gonna either put you in a long only equity position, okay, and they're never gonna get you out of it. So you'll take every major correction, or they'll put you like 60% stock, 40% bond, and they'll rebalance that twice a year. All right, those are the literally the two most popular Actually, I can't even think of a third. Those are the two ways big box advisors are gonna grow and manage money. So it's your job if you have one of those to go look at what happens when it appears like it's failing, right? You've often hear, heard me say that the stock market goes up 78% of the time. But what about the 22% of the time when it's not going up? Like how, how painful is doing a long only big box approach in those periods where it's not going up. And I'll dig into that this weekend and I wanna show you the price charts because it's so critical. It's not just in the loss or the fall in price, though obviously that's a big deal. It's also how much time it takes to get back to break even. And this is pretty eye-opening for people to see that when this approach they're following doesn't work, how long does it take to get back to break even? And that goes for any strategy, whether it's the big box long only or the big box 60 stock, 60% 60 stock, 40% bond split, and just rebalance twice a year. You have to know how painful it's gonna be when it's not working. And the same thing with the fearless wealth approach. So look at those periods where it appears like the, the, the system you're using is not working and how painful is it and how long does it take to get back to break even? Because this is one of the differences that can make a difference for people in their lives, especially if they're over the age of 50 or 60 or even 70. Right? You don't have a decade to get back to break even if you're 65. You may not want to need a decade if you're 55 or 45. And that's the problem with a lot of this big box approaches. The time to recover, not the price, not you lose 50% and you get it back, but how long does it take to get back to break even? And I'll dig into that this weekend. But look at that with yourselves and maybe not even just your investment strategies, just but also with life strategy or what you do to exercise or how well you eat like, what periods do those strategies go through when they appear like they're not working and how can you measure the time to get back? 
because this is one of the keys to finding a system, a powerful system that really works for people. All right, guys, thanks so much for being in my world. If you value this, please go to the website and subscribe to the newsletter because it makes a difference. And also, if you value this, please like, share, and forward it because that also makes a difference. Okay, until next time, this is RC Peck, and this is just another step in helping you protect your portfolio and your future. All right, take care.